Welcome to the UF IFAS Range Cattle Research and Education Center, located in Ona, Florida. Traveling west on Goose Pond Road, here on the left you see the northern border of the center's property. Turning onto Experiment Station Road, you are now on UF IFAS Range Cattle REC property. On the left is our Forage and Weed Nursery, a training and demonstration area that contains roughly 200 small plots of weed and forage specimens. Coming into sight just ahead, you'll see our administrative buildings and lab facilities, where I'll be meeting you in person in just a few moments for your virtual tour. See you soon. Gloria, Dr. Sellers has been expecting you right this way. Good morning, I'm Christina. Hey, good to see you. Come on in and have a seat. Andrea knows that you're here and she's on her way down and while we're waiting on her to get here uh, let me tell you a little bit about the center. It was formed back in 1941 and first started out around 2600 acres. By 1960 we increased to around 2840 acres which is its present size today and <clears throat> the original mission of the center was to basically clear native rangeland and plant improved grasses and improved legumes to increase cattle production in, production in the state. Uh, so that was the original mission. They only started out with two faculty members. Uh, today it's a little bit different. We have around 700 cattle. We're no longer clearing native range. We are uh, planting different pasture types still. But our mission remains the same. Um, we are still providing science-based information to address the challenges that owners and managers of grazing lands have. And to do this, the scope's increased. So now we have, instead of two factory programs, we have six. And <clears throat> the challenges that the owners and managers face include uh, general management issues surrounding forages or or even looking for different forages to increase production under lower fertility regimes. Is that something that's a, a concern in the state right now? Uh, animal, product, animal production, and that could include something like supplementation strategies uh, to increase pregnancy rates. They have pest management issues in both native and non-native species. Uh, soil fertility issues, uh, carbon sequestration, uh, so ecosystem services is what I'm talking about there. So a lot of interest in how carbon flux changes across the landscape. We also have wildlife habitat. So what, what our grazing lands provide in the sense of wildlife habitat and predator interactions uh, on the ranches as well. 
so surrounding a lot, a lot of that too is the economics of all those individual programs. So to get to those, like I said, we have six faculty programs. They are housed in various departments, agronomy, animal science, uh, food resource and economics, soil and water science, and wildlife ecology and conservation. So all of these programs are multidisciplinary and <clears throat> we all do research, we all do extension, we also do teaching. And we teach through the training of graduate students and in interns. So we're very fortunate here to have two residences where we can house up to 12 students. And right now, we only have five living here at the moment, two PhD, one master's, and two international exchange visitors. And we also do host undergraduate interns as well uh, from various institutions. So student training is a big deal for us because we're training the next generation and that next generation is either going to be teaching in an academic setting or they could be out in a research setting or training additional students for the future. So Andrea is coming in right now. Hey. So this is Andrea Hi Dunlap. There. She will be giving you the tour today and I hope you're able to see what all of our faculty programs do and get to interact with a lot of our staff and our students. So Andrea is going to take you out now and I hope you enjoy your day. All right. Let's go. Okay, so I know you had a long trip. Do you by chance need to use the restroom before we go walk around? Okay, what about, would you like some water or coffee? Okay, all right, well great. Well, as we're going around, um, when we go around by the bathrooms, I'll let you know, just in case. And um, what I'm gonna do now is just, we're gonna stop by and say hey to the faculty. And then hopefully later on, maybe if you have time, we'll go out and check them out in the field. So right this way. So here is Dr. Hans Ellington. Hi, how are you doing? My name is Hans Ellington and I'm an assistant professor in the Grazing Lands Wildlife Specialist here at Ono. I just started in July and I'm working remotely, but I hope to be on site soon. Thanks, nice to meet you. And this is our mail room. Here is the office, Dr. Fleet Moriel. Hello. Hi, my name is Philippe Muriel. I'm an assistant professor at the Ranch Cattle Research and Education Center, and I'm working primarily with nutrition and management of beef heifers and uh, cows. So please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. And here's the office for Chris Pravat. Hey, I'm Chris Pratt. I'm the beef cattle and forage economist here at the, at the Range Cattle REC. I'm a state specialized agent and I cover the entire state of Florida. I hope you have a great day uh, visiting the center and I'll be out there in the field so I hope to see you around. And here at the end of the hall is my office and also an office space for five students. And we have several of those here at the center in the different buildings to accommodate the students' needs. So here are the bathrooms. We have a ladies and a men's in the custodial closet. And now we're gonna head over to what was one of the oldest, well, what is one of the oldest buildings here at the center. And it was actually constructed in the 1940s. So here's Dr. Vendramini's. Hi, I am Joe Vendramini and I am the forage specialist here at the research center at ONA and my program focuses pretty much on management of uh, warm season grasses in tropical and subtropical areas and I'd like to thank you for visiting us today and I hope I'll see you on the field later. And then here across the hall is our break room. So coming right down this way, here you see some brochures, pamphlets, bulletins, and please feel free to look at these during your time of being here. And then here is 
Dr. Maria Silvera's office. Hi, nice to meet you and welcome to the Research Center. My name is Maria Silvera. I'm a professor of soil and water sciences. I've been here for about 14 years and I'm looking forward to catching up with you later in the field. And here we have two vacant offices. And just across the way is the LTAR lab. And um, I think they're out in the field today. And another ladies and men's restroom. And then coming out this way. Now here, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just take some time to go around and visit some of the other labs here at the center as well as seeing the faculty storage area, the greenhouses, the student buildings, and meet some of the students. And then if you have time, as I mentioned, we're gonna go see some more out in the field. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Palmer. I am a PhD student in the Animal Science Program and I am originally from Pennsylvania.
My name is Leandro Vieira. I am a second year PhD student from Brazil. I am advised by Dr. Maria Silveira at the Soil and Water Science Department in Universal Florida. Hi, my name is Caetano Sales. I'm originally from Berkeley, California, but lived most of my life in Brazil, where I did my undergrad in agronomy. I'm currently working on my master's degree in wheat science under the supervision of Dr. Brent Sellers, and I'm a graduate research assistant here at the station. Hi, my name is Jaime Garzón. I'm a PhD student in the agronomy department at the University of Florida. I'm from Colombia and I'm also part of the forage team here in ONA, advised by Dr. Joao Ben Ramin. Oh, hey all. My name's Wes Anderson. You call me looking at this uh, wild pig skull. So I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Wildlife Ecology and Conservation, originally from Pennsylvania. I'm just about finished with my degree, and uh, my dissertation research looked at the impacts of wild pigs on wetlands and amphibians across Florida cattle ranches. Hi, I am Dipti Rai and I am originally from Nepal. I am a PhD student at Soil and Water Science Department and I am working under Dr. Maria Silvera and Dr. Stephen Gerber. Hi, my name is Tyler Buckley and I'm a graduate research assistant in the Rangeland Wildlife Lab at the RC Rec. I'm advised by Dr. Raoul Bowden. student in the agronomy program. I'm working with Dr. Vendramini in the forest team. I am from Tocantins State in Brazil. Hi, my name is Clay Cooper and I'm the Ag and Natural Resources Agent in Citrus County. I'm also a master's student in the agronomy department working under Dr. Sellers. Okay, well, that concludes our tour of this portion of the center. Do you have time to, to go over and maybe see the farm a little bit and go out in the field? Great, great. Well, then what we'll do is we'll hop on the Kubota and go over to the farm so you can take a peek at those facilities. 
and then we'll head out to the field to visit with the faculty and so you can learn a little bit more about their programs. Farm sits just to the south of the administrative complex and serves as the hub for all field, cattle, and maintenance work. Established in 1941 through the efforts of legislators, cattlemen, and local citizens, the UF IFAS Range Cattle Research and Education Center is the only university owned subtropical center of its kind focused on the enhancement of livestock, forages, and natural resources of Florida's grazing lands. Located in Hardy County, the center is near 80% of Florida's beef cattle. Through decades of working closely with cattlemen, it's become known as the Cattlemen's Research Center. With 2,840 acres of native and improved pastures, it is the largest in area of UF's 12 research and education centers, which are located throughout the state. This land and its 700 plus beef cattle provide researchers an ideal field laboratory for research, extension, and the training of graduate students and exchange visitors. Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Research Center. My name is Austin Bateman. I am the uh, research coordinator here at the research station and I'm also the herdsman so take care of all uh, cattle needs and welfare and this morning we're going to be processing some heifers we have back here uh, weighing some of them and taking some of them to the market so thank you for stopping by I hope you enjoy your day I'm Tom Fussell. I'm Dennis Collick, the research coordinator. I assist the uh, faculty with their projects in the field, oversee the uh, facilities, and also the pastures. Thank you for stopping by. Now let's take a trip to the field so you can have an opportunity to see research in action, learn about our work from faculty, students, and visiting scholars, 
and meet our faculty program support staff. Hi, I am Joe Sanchez. I'm postdoc associate at the LTAR project here at the University of Florida. I'm working under Dr. Maria Silveira for the Water and Soil and Water Science Department, and I am from Brazil, Sao Paulo. Hi, my name is Marta Coleman. I am originally from Brazil, and I am currently a postdoctoral associate under Dr. Maria Silveira in the LTAR project. So the equipment that you are seeing here is a Yeti covariance tower. It is actually it's currently part of a big, big project called the LTAR, or the LTAR network, which is a network sponsored by the USDA, and it has 18 sites across America and one in Canada. So here in Florida, in the University of Florida, in partnership with the Archbold Biological Station, form one site, and this tower is collecting data for this project. What it does? Basically, it collects data from several climatic variables. For example, wind speed and direction, CO2 concentration in the air, moisture, temperature, several, several measurements. And it, through a technique called eddy covariance, it combines the data and calculates CO2 flux of this whole ecosystem. So. We have, uh, the tower was established in 2016. We have four years of data that we're working on. But right now, we already know that this whole ecosystem, even though we thought it was stable, it is acting as a carbon uh, sink. It is still absorbing carbon from the atmosphere and storing it as plant material, soil organic matter, in microorganisms, so it's still helping to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. I'm glad you were able to come out today. So this is one of the field experiments that we have ongoing. Uh, it's being this particular experimental site has been established for almost five years now. We started this experiment in 2016, and what we are looking at here is nutrient management strategies for bahia grass pastures. So there are different ways that we can manage the soil fertility of bahia grass pastures, and what we are looking here is whether biosolids, which is a, a byproduct of the wastewater treatment can replace inorganic fertilizers. So there's a lot of uh, agronomic and environmental benefits associated with uh, biosolids and that's what we're evaluating in this particular study. And by the way, this is one of the, uh, to my knowledge, the only field study currently in Florida that's evaluating agronomic and environmental impacts of biosolids on Bahia grass pasture. So what the students are doing today, you can see they are working on the background. They are harvesting the forage so we want to look at whether biosolids can replace an organic fertilizer. We're looking at the production perspective, whether uh, bahia grass produce as much as um, those treatments that were fertilized with an organic fertilizer. We're also looking at the nutritive value of this forage. In addition to the production aspect, we're also looking at uh, potential impacts of environmental, uh, on environmental responses. For instance, these devices are lysimeters. We use uh, these devices to collect water, so we come here periodically, weekly or bi-weekly, depending on the time of the year, and we collect water samples. We analyze those water samples for nitrogen and phosphorus. Those are the main concerns in terms of nutrient uh, transport. In addition to the lysimeters, we also have moisture sensors. These are the tall uh, devices that you see here. We have another equipment that's called pressure transducer, basically measures the water table. A lot of the pastures in South Florida, the water table fluctuates and it can stay closer, close or at the surface for uh, different periods of time, and that can facilitate nutrient transport. So we're also looking at those aspects. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day, and thank you for stopping by.
name is Shauna Stingu. I am originally from Wisconsin. I am a biological scientist here at the center in charge of the lab. I am also a master's student under Dr. Silvera. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Elizabeth Palmer and I am a PhD student here at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center and I work under the direction of Dr. Felipe Moriel. So on these pastures out here we typically do a heifer development study every year. The current study we're looking at is looking at different supplementation strategies during the development period. So we're looking at whether we can provide a constant amount of supplement during the development period or if we can do what we call it as a stair step supplementation strategy. So we're providing less supplement in the beginning of the developing period for about 50 days, and then we shift and have a higher amount of supplement during the last 50 days of the development period. The reason we're looking at this strategy with these heifers is because right now they're under high heat stress. So in August and September, we have pretty um, harsh conditions for them. So we're looking to see if we can move the greater amount of supplement and make them more efficient during the later period of the development stage when they're under um, less of a heat stress environment. So this is actually the second year of this study. And based on the data from year one, we saw that by shifting the, higher, shifting the supplement to a higher amount during the last stage of development, we can actually increase their body weight at the time of our puberty induction protocol and we can also improve their pregnancy rates. So we've seen some pretty positive results from this study and we're excited to see what we get for year two. So thank you so much for joining us today. The forage management program at the Range Cattle Research and Education Center has the objective to increase the efficiency of forage systems and animal production in South Florida. Our main focus is to decrease the inputs and costs related to forage management and livestock production and also have a, a, a better and more efficient environmental services uh, provided by the forages. One of the areas that we focus is the introduction of warm season legumes into warm season grass pastures and we have tried for many years different species and currently we are uh, doing research with an annual legume called Eschinomini but we also do some work with perennial uh, legumes those legumes they are able to fix nitrogen and, and provide some ecological services in our grasslands as well. The forage management program at ONA provides forage testing results for producers in the state of Florida. Uh, testing your forage is really important for the producers to make good decisions towards the forage management and also livestock feeding. We developed and adapted some procedures that we believe are more accurate to report the, the testing results for producers for the forages that we have, particularly here in South Florida, such as limpo grass, star grass, Bermuda grass, and Bahia grass. And if you would like to have your forage tested, please contact your county extension agent 
or you can access our website and get the form and you can mail us the forged samples and we will provide you the results. Hi, my name is Iran Silva. I'm a research scholar assistant Dr. João Vedramini's program he is a biological scientist. I'm from Brazil. Hey, I'm glad you caught me out here in the pasture today. So here at the center, two of my major programs that I focus on are beef cattle marketing and beef cattle and forage economics focusing mostly on management practices. So on beef, cattle, and forage uh, marketing, we focus specifically on marketing southeastern feeder calves, and we do this by providing the latest up-to-date economic information to our county extension agents as well as our stakeholders here in Florida. Each month and every single day, we calculate data that goes into our Florida Cattle Market Price Watch that allows us to evaluate animal revenue, cost of production, and economic profits for our beef, cow, our beef cow producers here in the state of Florida. The other program that uh, we specifically work on is our beef cattle management, beef cow and forage management practices. For our beef cow and forage management practices, we specifically study forages, looking at how we can get better gains and lower our cost of production, as well as looking at supplemental feedstuffs. So on our forages, we specifically focus on these perennial mixed forage pastures like the one we're standing in right now, as well as cool season annual forages and warm season annual forages that are able to boost our uh, animal performance and potentially lower some cost of gains uh, during the winter or the summer months. Another thing that we're really focused on is reintroducing alfalfa back into the south. Uh, specifically in Florida, we're looking for more producer adoption and enhancing some of the management practices that we have behind alfalfa, as well as potentially growing some perennial peanut. Uh, lastly, I'd just like to share with you that as an extension specialist, one of my uh, jobs is to educate and train county extension agents. So while we're doing that, we specifically have a group of county extension agents, five agents that are spread throughout the state of Florida that specifically work to, uh, to learn and educate other uh, agents and producers as they specialize uh, as a county extension agent in beef cattle and forage economics. So with that, I'm glad I got to share a little bit about what I do with you today. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I hope you have a great rest of your day at the center. Thank you. Thank you all for coming today. The Rangeland Wildlife Ecology Program at ONA is just getting started. And today I'm going to talk about some of the important wildlife issues in Florida's rangelands and how my program is going to address them. So what are some of the big issues? Well, in 2015, in Florida, the USDA estimated there was a $20 million loss uh, due to cattle and calf predation. And so one of the focuses of my program is going to be the who, what, where, when, and how of livestock predation. And by understanding these predator-prey dynamics, we can develop and test management solutions that will reduce or mitigate the loss due to livestock predation. Now, one of the other important issues I want to talk about today is biodiversity in Florida's rangelands. Now, Florida's rangelands are an important socio-ecological system. The calf-cow operations here are important economically at the state and local level. But beyond that, cattle ranching is an important cultural heritage for many people. And private rangelands are important habitat for many species, um, for things like crested caracara, bobwhite, and even the Florida panther. However, Florida's human population is continuing to increase, and that's placing pressure on landowners to convert rangeland into urbanization or other more intensive land uses. Now, if our goal is to help maintain Florida's rangelands, 
An important step along that path is increasing and maintaining the biodiversity on Florida rangelands. And if we want to do that, we can start small and build big. For example, my biologist Bethany White and I are currently developing a pilot project at Ona that's going to look at the effectiveness of different bluebird nest box designs. And this is an important first step of a larger project that's going to increase the biodiversity of birds on private rangelands in Florida. But beyond that, if our ultimate goal is to preserve the rangeland system in Florida, it's important to communicate the value that these systems bring to the state in terms of biodiversity and ecosystem services and communicate this information to the general public. Now, I think that's an important point to end on. So I wanna thank you all again for coming and I hope you continue to have a nice visit with the folks here at Ona. Hi, my name is Bethany White. I'm a biological scientist with the Rangeland Wildlife Program here at the center. I work for Dr. Hans Ellington, and we do research on various native and invasive wildlife species and rangeland habitat. Good to see you again. Uh, so my research and extension pro program focuses on weed management in pastures and rangeland, but also in semi-aquatic areas I work on some invasive species as well. But I do have some invasive species in pastures and one of them is smut grass, which is this plant right here. <clears throat> so I've spent the first 15 years here at UF working on smut grass and we have one selective herbicide that we can use that herbicide is actually pretty expensive and there's a lot of environmental factors that impacts its activity on smut grass. So we've determined that too much rainfall or too little rainfall uh, can really negatively impact that herbicide application and not control the smut grass species. So we're looking at different tactics, uh, looking at different herbicide carriers uh, to increase the activity and we're starting to see that rainfall in that case may or may not matter. Um, <clears throat> so we've been working on that for quite a long time. It's always difficult to remove a grass from a grass forage or grass weed from a grass forage. So that, that's kind of our struggle in, in this situation. Another grass weed that we're working on is this one here. It's one of the uh, 16 to 18 different broom sedge species that we have in the state. And a lot of producers initially thought that if you just apply lime to a pasture to increase the soil pH, that'll get rid of the species. And we've determined that that's not necessarily true. There's a couple species that do respond uh, to increasing soil pH and their densities will decrease. But this particular species will survive quite well at the soil pH that's recommended for bahia grass. So this study that we're standing in right now, we're actually looking at different macronutrients and seeing how they're impacting broom sedge density. And pretty interesting, over the last two years, uh, with now three years of potassium application, we've actually started to see a decline in broom sedge densities at this site as well as another site over near Lake Placid. So we're pretty excited about that, um, but we still got some time to go because this is a long-term study. It's funded by the Florida Cattle Enhancement Board. Hello, I'm Joseph Knoll. I am Dr. Sadler's technician for the Weed Science Program. All right, time for us to head back to the office.
just wanted to make sure everything went well today on your tour. Great, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that and we sure enjoyed having you here today. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to give me a call or send me an email and here's my card. Hope you have a safe trip home. Bye. Bye.